Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, September 27, 2012. We begin with exciting news from the world of physics. Researchers from Sandia National Laboratories have begun conducting experiments to test their new concept for fusion power, called maglev. As you probably know, the fusing of atoms is what powers our sun and every other star. If we could replicate that safely on Earth, it would be a tremendous source of power. Unfortunately, scientists are still working on a reactor that produces more energy than it needs, which may be where maglev comes in. The concept is that lasers would preheat deuterium and tritium inside a solid tube called a liner. An intense magnetic field would then implode the liner, rapidly compressing the hot gas and initiating fusion. Of course, it's not that simple. The intense magnetic field requires an intense electrical field, and this extreme current begins degrading the liner surface, turning it into plasma. So the liner, aka tube, made of beryllium, needs to be just the right thickness. If the walls are too thin, the liner degrades rapidly, making the reaction unstable, but too thick and the implosion can't reach the same velocity, potentially not initiating fusion. So to test some parameters that worked in simulation, scientists did a dry run, exposing the liner to an intense electrical and magnetic field, but without any hydrogen isotopes. While the outer surface did degrade, this tube thickness kept the critical inner chamber stable. With increased confidence in their simulations, the Sandia scientists believe high-gain fusion is possible with a stronger electrical source. However, before that, our initial maglev experiments involved in laser-heated gas scheduled for 2013. The hope is that those experimental reactions will break even and maybe even produce a small amount of net power. Next is an update from the world of material science. As you may know, food waste is a major issue in pretty much every developed country. A lot more food gets thrown away than is necessary, and it mostly isn't composted or otherwise reused in a useful manner. We've discussed turning waste treatment into a resource multiple times on Brainstorm. We're usually talking about waste water, but the same principle applies to food waste. To that end, a team at the City University of Hong Kong are working on ways to convert certain food waste into useful materials. That team had already been working on a biorefinery process that could produce useful chemicals from plant matter, like corn and sugarcane. A nonprofit called the Climate Group then approached them about using the biorefinery technology in collaboration with a corporate partner, Starbucks Hong Kong. The company wanted a better way to deal with their food waste, consisting mainly of leftover baked goods and about 10 million pounds of coffee grounds each year. Now the process starts by exposing this waste to a particular fungus. Its enzymes break down much of the material into simple sugars. From there, the sugars are fermented by bacteria into succinic acid, used as a sweetener in the food industry. However, the substance can also be processed into medicines, plastics, and even laundry detergent. Conventionally, most of these products are based on petrochemicals, so it's encouraging to see a process based on something renewable. Obviously, this technology won't be restricted to waste from Starbucks Hong Kong. The next step is a scaled-up biorefinery pilot plant in Germany. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.